Dimensional analysis is a very powerful tool for problem solving in science. Table 17.4 in the source book for teaching science uh, describes the physical quantities and their SI units. These are the physical quantities that are most frequently used in biology, chemistry, geoscience, and physics. When you look at the table, you're going to notice that the first seven of these items right here are in bold, and that's because these are the fundamental units. They can't be expressed in any more fundamental terms than themselves. For example, distance cannot be expressed in any more fundamental terms than distance, and mass cannot be expressed in any more fundamental terms than mass. So if you look over in the far right, you'll notice that the unit dimensions and SI units are meters, kilograms, seconds. They're just simple units by themselves. By contrast, the terms below this line right here are not written in bold because these are derived units. These units here are derived from the fundamental units. So for example, acceleration has units of uh, distance per time squared expressed in uh, SI units as meters per second squared. So if you look at the unit over here, it says meters per second squared. This incorporates the unit for time right here and incorporates the unit for meter or distance here as meters right there. So this is derived from length per time squared. Again, if you just look at area right here, area is not a fundamental unit because it can be expressed as distance squared, expressed in SI units as meters squared. So everything up here is a fundamental unit. Everything below this is a derived unit. The fundamental units are like the letters of the alphabet. They're the most important things to know because you can rearrange these to be able to create the uh, derived units that we use for measuring in science. So a closer look at this table shows again that everything below this line is composed of the units that appear above it. So if we were to look at something like uh, density, D, um, it's expressed in mass per volume or mass per length cubed. And it's going to be expressed in, in uh, SI units as kilograms per meter cubed. And similarly, if you're going to look at something a little bit more complex, like electric field uh, intensity, it might be expressed as newtons per coulomb, um, which could be expressed as kilograms times meters divided by the quantity of amps times second cubed. And we can see that all of those values appear up here. And so uh, these units right here are very, very important in science, but they're derived from more basic units, these seven fundamental units that we see up there. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to do some dimensional analysis with the, um, the basic concepts and units in science, and this will appear in table 1710 um, uh, these are key equations that we can understand with dimensional analysis. For example, let's say we were looking at potential difference measured in volts. And if we looked at the previous table, we would find that a volt is expressed in SI units as a kilogram meter squared per amp second cubed, or expressed in its quantities mass times length squared divided by electrical current times time cubed. Now how does that relate to current and resistance? Well, we know that current is a fundamental unit and expressed in amps. We can see that in the previous page right here. So if you're looking right there, you'll see that an ampere is a fundamental unit for current. And so we can say that the ampere is measured, or the current is measured in amps. In terms of resistance, we could look at that previous table over there. We would notice that uh, electrical resistance right here um, is measured in ohms. That's a symbol for ohms, which has a fairly complex value. It is going to be kilograms meters squared per amps squared second cube. So if we were to express that right here, we could see that if we were to multiply uh, current times resistance right here, and I'm just going to move this over here, and we're going to look at the electrical resistance, 
which is going to be an um, a ohm is actually a kilogram meter squared. You can see kilogram meter squared over amps squared times second cubed. And so in this one, we can see that the amp on the top will cancel one of those out. And we now have a value of kilograms meters squared per amp second cubed. And we notice that that's exactly the value that we have over here. And so uh, by looking at Ohm's law, which is V equals IR, we can clearly see that it makes sense dimensionally. In other words, the units make sense, and it has to. Um, and this is one of the most important things in terms of dimensional analysis. The units on the left always have to unit, equal the units on the right. That's what that equals sign means, not only in terms of the actual quantity, but also in terms of the units that are being measured. So if we continue through this, we can start to see that pattern elsewhere. We'll skip down here to look at another quantity right here in terms of energy. So if you were moving the table over here, you can see, okay, that um, energy is measured in joules. So that's the actual quantity, the, the derived unit is joules. And a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So if you're trying to ask yourself the question, okay, well, how does energy relate to concepts of force and distance? Well, if we were to look at the previous table, we would see that force, of course, is equal to mass times acceleration. That happens to be Newton's second law. And mass is measured in SI units in terms of kilograms. And then acceleration is uh, distance per time squared, or meters per second squared. So it's kilograms meters per second squared. Now, if you look at that, you'll notice it's very, very similar to what we see over here. There's kilograms meters squared per second squared. This is kilograms meters per second squared. So the only difference here is that there's just one distance measurement right here, and that distance measurement over here is squared. But we notice that distance is also measured in meter, so this is going to be measured in meters. So if I was to multiply distance measured in meters by force measured in kilograms meters per second squared, I'm going to have kilograms times meters over seconds squared. That happens to be force. And if I multiply times meters again, then I'm going to have kilograms meters squared over seconds squared. And we could express that here as equal to energy is equal to force times distance. Now you won't see it expressed that way in textbooks. However, you will see the quantity of work expressed as force times distance. But energy is defined as the capacity to do work, so it makes sense that energy also has units of force times distance if energy is the capacity to do work. So energy and work um, have the same units of joules, which could also be expressed in terms of um, force times distance or kilograms meters squared per second squared, as we see in this equation right there. So. Um, Looking at another one, let's take a look here at uh, uh, mass and velocity. Well, again, referring to the previous table, we know that mass in SI units is measured in kilograms. And velocity is measured in distance per time squared or meters, I'm sorry, distance per time or meters per second. So. If we look at this, we'll see, okay, this looks very similar to this, but here it's kilograms times meters over squared over second squared. This is just kilograms. And so if I multiply this times mass times velocity, I'd only have kilograms times meters per second. But if I multiplied it as mass times velocity squared, I will have the units that we see over there because it'll be kilograms times 
meters per second, the whole quantity squared. So we can see here that, that energy is, um, can be expressed as mass times velocity squared, or kilograms meters squared per second squared, which is a term we had over there for a term for a joule. Now, this makes sense if we start to look at uh, other equations that we may be familiar with. So, for example, we've seen the familiar there, the uh, equation that E equals mc squared, Einstein's equation there of mass energy equivalence. And we have um, energy on the left measured in joules, and of course we have to have energy on the right measured in joules. And so if we were to look at those units, we can see that this is kilograms meters squared per second squared on the left, and of course it's exactly the same thing on the right. And so we can see there that, uh, that this dimensional analysis with fundamental units um, here shows a relationship that we've seen elsewhere. But if we think about uh, the, um, uh, let's say, kinetic energy, uh, kinetic energy is oftentimes defined, well, is defined, um, EK is equal to one-half mv squared. Well, that makes sense, again, in terms of the same units, because mass is measured in kilograms and SI units. And then velocity is meters per second. Since it's squared, it's going to be meters squared per second squared. And we can see, again, that's our definition for a joule. So in both these cases, we see that uh, common definitions for energy, both in Einstein's mass energy equivalency here, as well as in our definition for kinetic energy, the units will make sense. And this is going to be true no matter how we uh, cut it. So for example, if we were going to do something different, like let's say we're looking at gravitational potential energy, um, potential energy is expressed as mgh, where in this case g is acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So it's going to have units of meters per second squared. So that's going to be the unit right here. Mass is measured in kilograms, and height is measured in meters. So again, if we express that out there in um, our uh, SI units, it'll be kilograms, and then meters per second squared times meters, which again is just simply kilograms meters squared per second squared, that is also equal to a joule. And so this is an example of um, how one can see if they have their equations um, in the right units, because the units on the left will always equal the units on the right, even when we're doing with fundamental definitions of things like energy and power and capacitance and so forth.